Okay, it's lunchtime at work, and Saku pulls out her homemade bento box. Her co-workers are stunned. Again, they're like, with these mad cooking skills, she's definitely trying to snag a high-class husband. Saku has never even thought about getting married, but the thought now rattles her. What if she marries someone and brings Yukichi into the mix? With his culinary magic and domestic skills, what if her future hubby leaves her for Yukichi? Yikes! The drama! Saku's shouting, Yukichi! And everyone thinks she's talking about the guy on the Japanese yen note, Fukuzawa Yukichi. After work, Saku races home and grabs Yukichi in a bear hug. She pops the question, If someone richer wants you, would you leave me? And Yukichi says, Yes! Oh, the betrayal! Saku's a roller coaster of emotions. She's crying, she's furious, and she's even thinking of pulling an all nighter to upskill for a job promotion. More money, more Yukichi love. But as determined as she is, she can't resist the allure of cuddling with Yukichi for a peaceful sleep. Oh, the complexity of love and ambition. Tonight, Saku and Yukichi decide to kick back and watch a horror show after dinner. They're all like, shh, we're not scared. But inside? Scared out of their wits. Saku even thinks about drowning her fears in a can of beer. But Yukichi nudges her toward the bath instead. In the bathroom, Saku's playing with Yukichi's rubber ducky, and then she looks at the door, mistakes Yukichi for a ghost and freaks out, but surprise, it's not a haunting. Yukichi was just leaving a scale at the door as a not-so-subtle hint that Saku's been gaining weight. Come bedtime, Saku can't sleep. She's spooked by the dripping water in the kitchen. Yukichi goes to investigate but doesn't return for a while. Curious, Saku finds him utterly mesmerized by the dripping water. And just like that, all her fears evaporate. Fast forward to the next morning, Saku oversleeps and is rushing to work. In the chaos, she spills her coffee all over the wall. Saku thinks Yukichi's gonna lose it. But wait, Yukichi had put up wallpaper to prevent such disasters. Talk about thinking ahead. After Saku heads to work, Yukichi's on a DIY spree. He even pastes new wallpaper and, get this, rebuilds the kitchen cabinet that got stained with coffee. Who needs a handyman when you have a cat this skilled? Saku comes home to the remodeled kitchen and she's jaw-droppingly amazed. So, Yukichi is taking a casual stroll in the park. That's when he spots Yumei chilling in a box. And why is she there? Turns out, Yumei found a little abandoned kitten in that very box. Yumei can't take the kitten home because she lives in a pet-free apartment, and her grandma has poor eyesight, so she decides to keep the kitty company until someone else adopts it. Just when you think things can't get more dramatic, it starts pouring. Yukichi, being the hero we all need, takes Yumei and the kitten to his grandma's place. But alas, grandma is too old to keep a pet. Just when Yumei is about to break down, grandma gets on the phone and guess what? She finds a new home for the kitten. So for now, the kitten stays with grandma. How adorable is that? On the way back, Yumei's feeling all sorts of emotional. She hopes the little kitty grows up to be as big and as awesome as Yukichi and dreams of taking it to a concert one day. And then, Yumei's mom finally finds her, ending Yumei's little adventure and solving Yukichi's dilemma. Recently, there's a guy creeping around the neighborhood, targeting women. The moment Yukichi hears about this, he's on full protector mode. Our furry friend here rushes to buy a personal safety alarm and some pepper spray for Saku. But the clock is ticking, and Saku hasn't returned home yet. And then, a siren goes off! Yukichi grabs a frying pan and dashes out, racing through the park. Who does he spot? It's Ryo, a supermarket cashier, in a heated argument with her ex-boyfriend. Yukichi, thinking the guy's the creep everyone's been warned about, jumps right in. Just as the ex is about to make a move, bam, Saku in the house. She judo flips him onto the ground like it's no big deal. Yukichi's jaw drops. His owner is actually a martial arts queen. It makes him feel a little useless, honestly. 
but hey, as long as he can keep whipping up those delicious meals for Saku, he's happy. Now we talk about Yukichi's old story. He stranded in the bitter cold, thinking his ninth life is up. Just as he's losing hope, enter Saku, the chaotic angel who rescues him and even names him Yukichi. But wait, plot twist. The moment he steps into Saku's home, Yukichi realizes it's basically a dump. Like, no cleaning has been done since the Stone Age kind of dump. Hungry, Yukichi prowls for food and... What does Saku find? Three-month-old milk. Our boy Yukichi thinks of bolting. Just then, a box topples over, almost crushing him. And who saves the day? Saku, risking it all, dashes out in the frigid cold to buy him some decent food. When Yukichi wakes up, he discovers that Saku doesn't even have a proper place to sleep. And just as Saku is rushing out for work, she encounters a roach. With feeling the agility, he tackles that critter like it's the last play in the Super Bowl. From that moment on, Yukichi decides to take matters into his own paws. He's gonna clean up this trash palace for Saku, hence his present-day Herculean size. Like, did he munch on some superhero kibble or what? Late in the evening, Yukichi receives a call from Saku. She tells him she won't be coming home for dinner because the company's executive director has suddenly invited all the employees out for drinks. And seriously, who can say no to the big boss, right? Luckily, Saku and Orizuka, the champions of alcohol endurance, step up to shield their colleagues from the onslaught of booze. Their colleagues can't help but admire Saku's drinking prowess. But plot twist. When she finally gets home, she promptly face plants in front of Yukichi. Good thing Yukichi anticipated this. He's prepared a clam soup to help her sober up. Beyond that, Yukichi takes off her makeup, gives her a bath, massages her, and even puts on a facial mask for her. She's being pampered like royalty. The next day, Yuri arrives at the company and is taken aback to see Saku. Not just because she's at work, but she's absolutely crushing it. In stark contrast, Yuri is nursing the mother of all hangovers. Is she even human? But what's more surprising, Yuri then makes a surprising discovery about Saku. Despite owning a cat, there's not a single cat hair on her. In an unintended slip, Saku mentions that Yukichi loves lint rollers. And Yuri's like, so cats like that actually exist? I mean, who knew, right? One day, the elderly neighbor Mei suddenly popped by. She mentioned that the volunteers cleaning the nearby park were short-handed and wondered if Yukichi might be interested in joining. Come the day of the event, the seniors were absolutely gobsmacked by Yukichi's imposing stature. Many thought Yukichi, with his cat-like limbs, might have trouble cleaning. Yet, in the blink of an eye, Yukichi had cleaned the entire park and even managed to prune the trees into the shape of cats. The seniors were amazed at the efficiency and hadn't dreamed that the task could be accomplished so quickly. After work, it was playtime. They introduced Yukichi to Croquet and even gifted him his very own mallet. What a delightful turn of events! That afternoon, Yukichi spotted a familiar stray cat on his balcony. Its name was now Daya. Turns out Daya's owner was on vacation and had left the little furball in May's care. However, missing Yukichi terribly, Daya made his way over and stubbornly refused to return to his cage. Just as luck would have it, Mei had to step out for an errand, leaving Yukichi with no choice but to babysit Daya. Even though Yukichi was a big cat himself, he'd never had the experience of looking after a kitten. After some time, Mei returned to find a heartwarming scene of Yukichi and Daya napping together in the living room. Back with his owner, Daya, inspired by Yukichi, constantly tried to walk on two legs, aiming to be just like him. It was lunchtime, Yuri and Oshiro were about to enjoy their break together. The conversation naturally steered towards Saku. Unexpectedly, some of the male colleagues approached Oshiro, pleading with him to discreetly find out if Saku was seeing someone. She's gorgeous, efficient, and she can cook? She's the total package, they exclaimed. Oshiro dropped a bombshell. She mentioned how when Saku first joined the company three years ago, she often looked under the weather, but everything changed one day when he spotted her eating an unusually misshapen rice ball. Yuri chimed in, recalling the many times she'd spotted Saku on the train. 
In one memorable instance, a fearless Saku had nabbed a creep who was harassing Yuri. Impressed, Yuri instantly idolized Saku, getting her contact details and even applying to work at the same company. Contrary to the flawless image in the eyes of her co-workers, in reality Saku might be... well, not as perfect as they think. Talk about shattering illusions. Today, in the middle of her work, Saku had a sudden realization. The staff trip was next week. Although initially reluctant to join, her colleagues needed her ace drinking skills. And with Yukichi being so self-sufficient, leaving him for two days wasn't really a concern. That evening, when Saku informed Yukichi about the trip, he seemed entirely nonchalant. She thought about leaving extra cash for him, but then remembered Yukichi would just swipe her credit card anyways. Heck, even the travel outfits were prepared by Yukichi. Saku felt a pang of uselessness. Going to bed, Saku felt a certain melancholy about being away from Yukichi for two whole days. Unexpectedly, Yukichi seemed to mirror her sentiments. The next day, as Saku was about to leave, Yukichi handed her a specially prepared shopping list. Initially feeling that Yukichi was brushing her off, but upon closer inspection, she realized all the items on the list were things she loved. It made her miss Yukichi even more. And what was Yukichi up to during her absence? The usual house chores, of course, but with Saku away, Yukichi felt oddly idle. In moments of longing, he would snuggle into a pile of clothes, taking in Saku's scent. But a cat can't be down in the dumps forever. So he decided to go for another round of house cleaning. While Saku, on her trip, didn't forget to shop for Yukichi either. She bought a new apron. Her colleagues mistakenly thought it was for her. As night fell, thanks to Saku and Orizuka, the managing director having drunk himself into a stupor. But while deep in conversation, Saku herself also succumbed to the effects of alcohol. Overwhelmed by nostalgia in her room, she impulsively dialed her home number, thinking of Yukichi. Her colleagues laughed off the idea of a cat answering a phone. But little did they know, Yukichi was also missing her dreadfully. He found some solace by wearing Saku's clothes, cuddling into their familiar scent to fall asleep. When Saku got home the next day, the duo, worn out from their emotions, just crashed together, sleeping until the morning light. Another grueling workday came to an end, and Saku was greeted with a delicious meal prepared by Yukichi. However, in the midst of dinner, a button from Saku's skirt unexpectedly popped off. Shocked, Yukichi immediately made her step on the scales. To their horror, Saku had gained quite a bit. Yukichi immediately confiscated all of Saku's alcohol and snacks. Determined to shed the extra pounds, Saku vowed to wake up early for some morning exercise. But, come morning, she was the same old latecomer. At work, colleagues generously offered her loads of snacks. Unable to resist the temptation, she discreetly gobbled them all up in the office. The result? Even more weight gain, Yukichi contemplated pouring all of Saku's sake down the drain and even sent her out for chili runs. A month later, while Saku managed to lose a whopping 600 grams, Yukichi mysteriously bulked up. But after a brief period of controlled drinking and dieting, Saku was back to her original weight. Let's dive into the life of Saku's colleague, Yuri. Today, she's making a trip back to her hometown to visit her mom. Little did she know, she would discover that Ryo, a part-timer at the local supermarket, is actually her cousin and currently staying at her family home. During their chat, the ever-so-practical Yuri suggests she should consider dating. And then BAM! Ryo surprisingly admits having a crush, leading Yuri to anticipate some romantic tale. But guess who Ryo's gushing over? None other than the perfect Saku. Yuri, who herself hasn't dated in years, playfully wonders if she should just settle down with a woman, and to her surprise, Ryo echoes the sentiment, praising how amazing Saku is. And as they chat about their shared admiration, somewhere in the distance, Saku and Yukichi just can't stop sneezing. Every morning, Yukichi has this cute routine of watering his cat grass. Now not every cat fancies cat grass, but Yukichi? He's obsessed. As he's about to dine, a timely doorbell rings. A delivery. Mistaking the cat grass for her breakfast, Saku takes a big bite. Crunchy? Yes. Tasty? Heck no. She immediately feels a rumbly in her tumbly. After consulting neighbor May, it turns out the cat grass May gifted Yukichi is actually a mix of oat and barley. Close call. 
Saku nearly had to rush Yukichi to the emergency room, but after a day of, well, intense bathroom breaks, everything settles down for Saku. Note to self, maybe leave the cat grass to the cats, Saku. As Yukichi lounged in front of the TV, a quirky show about pets and their owners looking strikingly similar caught his attention. This made him burst into a vivid daydream. What if Saku resembled him? With a constant stern expression like she's always on the verge of scolding, and being a whiz at both cooking and house chores, poor Yukichi would probably find himself kicked out of his own home. Laughing at the absurdity, he immediately pampered Saku with extra treats and care upon her return. The following morning, it was Saku's turn to stumble upon the same show. She started to imagine a Yukichi with her own traits. That'd be the essence of a typical cat, right? Ah, dreaded Monday blues. Oshiro and Yuri were dragging their feet into the office, but there was Saku, cheerfully munching on her lunch. In a mini flashback every Sunday night, Saku snuggles up to Yukichi, whining about the upcoming work week. Yukichi's genius solution, getting Saku to wash his soft little kitty paws. This routine instantly soothes Saku, after hours of gentle reassurances and relentless paw snuggling, just as Saku finally settles into bed, she'd suddenly crave a drink. Yukichi simply purrs loudly while laying on top of her, ensuring she drifts off. Back to reality, Saku shares her quirky Sunday ritual with her colleagues, indulging in her cat's paws. Yuri does a quick internet search and exclaims, Cat paws release calming pheromones. To which Saku dreamily remarks, Imagine a world where everyone had a cat's paw to soothe them. Pure bliss. It's Saku's most awaited day off, waking up to a scrumptious breakfast already prepared by Yukichi. But what's this? A wallet on the table? No way Yukichi forgot it. He's always so meticulous. Concerned, thoughts rush into her mind. Could he be unwell? Without hesitation, she dashes to the supermarket in search of him. Meanwhile, Ryo, who's eagerly awaited this moment, spots her savior. The two strike up a conversation and bond instantly. As Saku approaches, she sees Yukichi swarmed by an overly enthusiastic store manager showering him with gratitude. Cockily, Saku assumes she's just rescued her forgetful cat from a payment fiasco, only to watch, mouth agape, as Yukichi deftly completes the payment with a swipe of a card. Gosh, sometimes the pet seems more tech-savvy than the owner. Today, Yukichi and Yumi decided to have a picnic at the park. Yumi surprised Yukichi with a keychain of his favorite idol group, Um Yusi, and more specifically, of the character Gomafu. Curiously, Yumi inquired why Yukichi had such an affinity for Gomafu. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Yukichi reminisced about his younger days, revealing that the very first rice ball he ever made for Saku was taught to him by Gomafu on a TV show. Lately, Saku felt like she was losing her ability to converse post-holidays. It wasn't due to any medical reason, but rather because when at home, even without her uttering a word, Yukichi would handle everything. Considering most of her conversations with Yukichi were essentially her talking to herself. Determined not to lose her speaking skills, Saku turned to her phone's AI assistant for a chat in the evening. Yet, thinking of a topic proved challenging. She opted to play a card memory game with Yukichi to stimulate her brain. But plot twist, Yukichi outshined human Saku in memory. Laughing off her defeat, she realized that she needed to keep her wits about her to keep earning for Yukichi's upkeep. From then on, Yukichi would whip up brain-boosting meals for her. Taking a step back into Yukichi's memories, we see the days when he was just a small, unassuming black kitten. Freshly brought into Saku's home, he was overwhelmed by the cluttered mess that greeted him. He found it peculiar how he had to nudge and wake Saku every morning just to get her to work. Fearing he might meet his end in such a chaotic environment, Yukichi often thought of escaping. One day, as luck would have it, Saku forgot to lock the door. As Yukichi ventured out, considering Saku's kindness in feeding him, he took it upon himself to dispose of some of the trash. Even though he thought he'd never see Saku again, memories of her saving him came flooding back. Before Mei could close the door, Yukichi made his way back inside. Resolute in his decision to care for Saku, Yukichi began cleaning up her messy home. The most exasperating part was the old man who'd always shoo him away during his cleanup. Yukichi later realized it was because he wasn't segregating the trash properly. 
One day, seeing all the neatly sorted garbage, the old man not only praised Yukichi, but also gave him a bath. Much to Yukichi's dismay, he grew even more resentful of the old man. On returning home, Yukichi realized Saku had left for work. But what was surprising was the open windows allowing fresh air in, and a lot of the clutter had been cleared. Yet, every time he saw Saku, her complexion seemed off. He blamed himself for being too tiny, unable to do more for her. But everything changed one day when he accidentally turned on the TV. On screen was Gomafu, teaching kids how to make rice balls. Humans seem energized after eating these rice balls. That's when Yukichi's culinary journey began. Fast forward to the present, and Yukichi, now a full-grown, highly competent cat, has prepared the most delicious rice balls for Saku's dinner. All right, folks, that wraps up our captivating journey with Saku and Yukichi. If you've enjoyed their wild adventures and heartwarming moments as much as I did, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more anime recaps. See you in the next video.